Your new book, The Louis Body Soldier, you include poems and prose, mm-hmm. and it really captures the essence of, I think, you and who you are and what you're going through. Can you tell yeah, me? I wanted this book um, to make sure that, uh, for one, it was value for money. I just didn't want to, the normal book of writing about long medical statements. I wanted people to get to know me, but I wanted to also for them to read my poems and also my blogs, which I write on a daily basis. So I've entwined the three or four together and put them all in one book. And I think one of the nicest compliments I had was off a lady in England. And um, she turned around to me and said, Norms, it was like having you in the same room because I felt as though you were talking to me. And I could imagine you being there telling me what's going on. And she said, you held no punches. You were very honest with it. And I honestly felt like you were there. And that's exactly how I wanted the book to come across. I wanted to be a friend. I wanted to be a colleague. And I just want to help people. And I wanted to sit there comfortable and listen, even though it's quite upsetting in parts. I wanted them to know that there is life after diagnosis. And from the feedback we have had, and and yours as well, uh, it seems like it's it's come across that way. Yeah. So one thing you talk about is the hallucinations. And I would just like to get uh, more into this. Some people who have Alzheimer's do have these vivid hallucinations that can be Mm -hmm. part of the disease, but not always. For someone with Lewy bodies, this is part and parcel of the disease process. Just about everyone with Lewy bodies reports these very vivid hallucinations. People, I I think they're desperate to understand what this is like for you. The people who are caregivers and the people going Mm -hmm. through it. And so whatever you feel comfortable talking about, I think it's a great learning experience for everyone. Right, yeah, that's, that's no problem at all, because like I said, I do, that's all I want to do, all I want to help. The hallucinations sometimes come thick and fast. It has no bearing on what kind of day I've had, or a bad day or a good day. I could have a great day and a horrendous night. I could have a really bad day and a really good night. There's no rhyme or reason to it, but when they come, I think the hardest thing for people to understand is what I'm seeing is very real. It would be like to say to you now or to anybody who watches this, you're not really seeing me. It's just imagining it. And you guys would sit there thinking, no, I'm not. I can see this. This is real. And that's exactly the same. What I see is very, very real. It's part and parcel of my life. It's not very nice. And it's sometimes awful, awful beyond words. But other times, it's just as simple as, like I mentioned in the book, I actually saw myself coming out of the lift. I actually saw myself walking towards me, then turn right. I was absolutely aghast. It was me. I was dressed. I was suited. I was booted. And I knew it was me. And there's nobody else could tell me any difference. But there's nothing in my brain saying, no, that's impossible. It can't be you. Because what I saw was me. And it wasn't until I calmed down and the hallucination petered out and my wife calmed me down that I realized then that I had a hallucination. And obviously I was sat there and that technically it couldn't have been me. But it was me at that time. What happens is very, very real. And I think it's hard to try to get people to understand that. So when I try to talk to carers who who have someone with with Louis bodies, what I like to say is, if if I'm holding up this thing of salt and... I have, I have Louis bodies and I'm, I'm having a hallucination of a thing of salt. And if you, as, as my carer, say, this is not here, it'd be the same thing as if I'm telling you at, without the hallucinations that I am not holding this up right now. It looks the, worst, the same. Yeah. The worst thing you can say is it's not here. The worst thing you can say to somebody with Louis bodies is it's not really happening. You're imagining it because it does happen in real time. Let them come out of the hallucination. Let them calm down. See if they remember it if they do or not, because not always you remember them. I don't always remember my hallucinations. I do remember some that stayed with me for days. I do have some, I have flashbacks during the day. I'll shout and scream because I have these flashbacks, regardless whether I'm inside, outside, on the boards, in a car. It doesn't matter. I can't control this thing. Um, but for anybody to say they don't exist or you imagine it is the worst thing you can say because it's really happening. Yeah. 
So in, in the moment, absolutely the best thing that Elaine can do is just try to, to have you um, be, feel, feel safe and secure in the moment. Yeah, and run with it, yeah. And run with it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just knowing that there's somebody there. You know, um, I'll give you a perfect example. I once sat in our front room and we had patio doors. And I looked down on the floor and I saw lots of rabbits. And I looked at Elaine and I said, why have we got rabbits in the front room? And somewhere deep down in my brain, I knew that they shouldn't be there. But to me, they were real. And Elaine got up, shooed them out, shut the patio doors and said, oh, gone now. I was happy. And that was it. It's called distraction techniques. Yep. Now, bear in mind, Elaine's been doing this for 30 odd years. Yep. So she's very experienced in doing it. So you remember that after yeah. the fact or do you remember it only because elaine talked to you about it oh norm the other day you were seeing rabbits or do you remember i remember because I, I i remember that particular time that happened but it's only when elaine tells me after that i keep remembering it so i had no memory of it. looking back at it knowing now that that was halluc a hallucination and that the rabbits weren't actually there yeah. What, what, how can you make sense of it after the fact? You can't. You can't. You've just got to sit and try and fight within your mind and try and work out that and you've got to try and rationalize that this is the disease. This is the card that's been dealt with you. And hopefully it doesn't turn into anything really nasty. But it's absolutely petrifying because you, it's like you have no control. It's like you have no control. Somebody once said to me, I've been living bodies. It's like having two diseases. It's like having dementia, but you also know you have dementia. Whereas with Alzheimer's, a lot of the time you don't, because with Alzheimer's, your brain's on a loop, so you do forget most things. But with Lewy bodies, you know full well that if you recall that hallucination and you have no control over it, chances are that's going to happen again. You have no idea where, when, or what time, and, but you have no control over it, and it's petrifying. Someone, someone who's been diagnosed with Lewy bodies and they say, you know what, I have these hallucinations and I want to make sense of them. So I'm, I'm writing them down, I'm studying them, I'm trying to figure it out and it's, it's getting them frustrated because they're so elusive and they're not able to figure it out. What kind of, would your advice to them be, you know, kind of don't worry so much about it? You're, you're really not. Yeah, my, my, exactly. Yeah, my advice would be, you know, this is my own personal advice, uh, you know, it's not yeah. government related or anybody else, it's just my own advice. But the way I deal with it, my advice is don't read too much into it. Yeah. Yeah. Don't read too much into it, because if you started to, um, not stratify, if, it, if, you've got, if you've got strategies and you started to break it down into different modules, saying why does this happen, what time of day, it would drive you absolutely nuts. You know, then you start to think, is it because of the life I've led? Is it, is it memories from where before? Some of the hallucinations are so horrific. With me, anyway, it couldn't possibly be anything in my past life. I'm a complete pacifist. I've never been violent. Uh, I can't remember the last time I raised my hands. I'm about four years old, I think. And, but some of, the, some of the hallucinations I have are graphic violence of people dying, of people burning to death of people being cut and stabbed. They're just absolutely horrific. And I, it plays no part in my former life. So if I started to think about this all the time, it would make me worse. It would make me worse. By all means, think about it. You know, try and think about it and think, oh, that was awful. But try also to think it's the illness. It's the illness. Because with Lewy bodies, you can do yeah, so, so those sort of graphic scenes, uh, I, I think, you know, we know how people are affected when they go to a movie, and they see this in a movie, but this isn't a movie. This is as if it's happening to you and right in front of you, and you, you are in the movie then. Uh, so it's a yeah. big difference, because you have this, you can tell us the difference between the hallucination versus going and seeing a violent movie. It's a world apart, right? Yeah, yeah, and I can tell the difference of a hallucination and a night terror. A night terror is a really, really bad dream when you wake up screaming and shouting. But in my hallucinations, I'm actually physically up out of bed 
and I'm banging and fighting against the wall and I'm on the floor trying to drag babies away from deathly situations and stuff like that. So I'm actually acting this out as if, as if I'm in a movie. It's not, it's not a night terror. It's not where I'm asleep. It's totally different. Have you come up with any kind of theory or idea why you're having these profoundly negative hallucinations? I think, yeah. Um, again, it's just my humble opinion. Sure. Um, but because I am such a positive person, because I am such a half full and not half empty glass person, and I look at life that life should be living, I think somewhere in my subconscious, I'm deeply, deeply worried about what will happen to my family and what will happen to my relations after. And I think, as I said, I'm not a doctor, I'm not a psychologist, but I think because I am such a positive person, I drive myself so hard to stay well. I think it's the fear of not being well and what could possibly happen may make these hallucinations be so vivid. But that is my own humble opinion, <laughs> you know, and nobody else's. Yeah, well, well that's, that's fascinating, um, and, and that's really interesting. So the percentage of negative versus benign hallucinations, and, and really, even if it's just lovely bunnies, it still mm. can be quite upsetting when you know that the bunnies aren't there. Yeah, yeah, of course. And it's when, when uh, the other day I was, I was sat in, I was sort of sat here in the bedroom on the computer, and I showed you to Elaine, and I said, Elaine, what did you want, love? And she said, nothing. I said, yeah, you just shouted. And she said, no, I didn't. She said, I promise you I didn't. I was, I was reading. She's reading a book. And, uh, not mine, I may add. It's somebody else's book. <laughs> and, um, yeah, and, but I, I just heard the voice as clear as day. You know, I still hear my mum's voice. My mum's been passed now 10, 15 years. I hear my mum's voice. You know, so it's not just visual hallucinations. It, it's also other things as well. It's, you know, it's auditory hallucinations as well it's not very nice is the way to do it but as, yeah. as low as it not as low as it but in the mornings and middays i'm usually quite okay it can happen anytime but for some unknown reason which nobody knows mornings and mid afternoons are quite quite calm but as the day goes on i just get massively worse so yeah so um so is it about 50-50, negative? I'd say, I'd say it's about 70-30, I think. Um, the horrendous um, hallucinations where there's death and destruction uh, usually happens 70% of the time during the night or leading up to the night. 30% is I can be sat there watching TV and um, all of a sudden somebody will come running in, you know, and I'll jump around and I'll jump up and I'll shout, get out, get out, but there's nobody there. You know, and it's not until after I realize that. So I'd say about 70, 30, yeah. Has that changed over the course of the years where it's been getting worse or getting better or? Uh, Elaine would say yes, I would say no. Okay. What would Elaine uh, say? Yeah, Elaine would, Elaine would say yes, I am gradually getting worse. Elaine would say I'm a lot worse now than I was 12 months ago. Okay. 